Do, 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 do. Oh, I look like really red. Okay. Let me see. Tara wanted me to invite her. Okay, so I look kind of red today. I'm not sure why I think it's because of my camera, but I don't care. Anyway, so i um, making this video because Spirit has been guiding me to talk about my story. Um, and also, good morning everyone, and also to talk about curses because that's a large, extremely large part of my story. So, um, first off, I want to say that... Um, Spirit has been guiding me to talk about this. I'm not sure why. I don't know if there's somebody that needs to hear it or what may be the reason, but for about a month now. And I've just been kind of like, I don't really want to look like a victim. I don't want people to think that I, you know, am a victim or blah, blah, blah. And Spirit was like, uh, this isn't about you. I was like, oh, yeah. Right, so here I am. Anyway, so in order to understand um, a little bit about my relationship, we'll just say, with curses, is um, you have to understand where I came from, right? So uh, a little bit about me, or let's just start at the beginning, I guess. Um, so... I was born to a, I think she was 18 or 19 year old mother. Um, she was not ready to have children and um, she also wasn't capable of showing any kind of love or affection because she really didn't receive that growing up. So, um, I was born to her and my father, my stepfather, um, and he was a heroin addict. So, that's what I was born into. Um, my, my mother had a, had a really terrible relationship with her mother, and so she was looking for a way out of what the situation she was in and she met my stepfather who is my father and my heart father because he's been there since the day I was born so anyway I was born to these two people and um, like I said my dad was a heroin addict and my mom was um, a very um, disassociated or detached human being so I, um, I came into this world and, um, at a very, so my mom had me and then the, a year later she had my brother and then a year later had my other brother. Um, so we were like, you know, one after the other and she was a young, a young mom and really, like I said, really didn't know how to be a mom, really had no mother figure to be able to, um, look at in that regard. So she didn't know how to um, show affection, be affectionate, anything like that. Okay, so let's let's move on, right? So now that you know kind of what I was born into, um, at a very young age I quote unquote lost my innocence at two years old. Um, so I, ha I was I was abused um, physically, emotionally, mentally, and sexually. And it started at two years old. So, um, I remember, I don't remember the first time it happened, but I do remember when I was like four years old and it happening. And I was like, 
you know, I didn't understand. I was a child. I just froze and I was just, you know, there. So um, this continued on and continued on. And meanwhile, my, um, my dad, he was out making money, but he would make money and then he would use it for drugs. And my mom, she was trying to take care of all three of us kids and trying to, you know, do what she could to bring money into the home and, and there was not really a lot. So let's fast forward to where I am eight years old and I'm in school and they're talking about, you know, don't let people touch you, don't let people do things to you that, you know, the if this happens to you, then it's not supposed to happen. And I was like, wait a minute, what? What do you mean? So I went home and I told my mom and I said, you know, they were talking about stuff that happens to me at school. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, every time I go to so-and-so's house, you know, you drop us off over there like three times a week and then all weekend, um, this happens to me. And they told me it's not supposed to at school, you know. And, um, and she was like, that doesn't happen to you. And I was like, yeah, it does. It happens to me. And, you know, what's wrong with me? And she was like, oh, it's because you're cursed. So I was eight years old, and because my mom didn't want to deal with the fact I was being um, sexually abused, she told me I was cursed. And this was like a, it was like a running joke in our family, right? Angela, anytime anything bad happened, Angela's curse did it. You know, the washing machine broke. Oh, it was Angela's curse. The car broke. It was Angela's curse. You know, I was, I was cursed. And so, um, at e I started drinking alcohol at age eight because I realized that this stuff wasn't supposed to be happening to me and it was happening to me. And, um, so I started drinking and it led me down, it led me down a really dark path for a long time. So, um, I guess it was about 12 years old. I started to think, well, you know, if this stuff is happening to me and it's happening to me multiple times, um, it must be just what's supposed to happen, right? And so, um... I remember my power animal was an owl. So my power animal is an owl. And I remember my power animal visiting me when I was like 12 or 13. And I walked outside and there's this huge fucking owl. Like this huge fucking owl sitting on the fence. And it used to come to my window and knock on my window at night. And I told my mom... And she was like, oh, oh, no, no, that's bad. That's bad. That's part of the curse. That's bad. That's bad. Something's going to get you. And I was like, oh, my gosh, the curse is real. Like, because, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, the curse is real. There's this, this, this animal that's manifested and shown me that the curse is real. And I, I was terrified of owls. Anytime I saw the owl. I was terrified. Well, anytime anything bad was going to happen, the owl showed up right before. So I, in my head, it was like the owl is letting me know something bad's going to happen because it's part of the curse, right? So, um, this was my life. This was my life. You know, um, I continued to bring people in that would validate my shitty story. Because this is a shitty story I told myself from eight years old that I'm cursed. And um, and I brought people in. And when I brought people in to my life, they validated my shitty story that I was telling myself. And I want to stop right here and I want to let you know. You create your own reality. You are the ones that manifest this shit in your life. Because let me tell you, 
it only got worse for me. I would tell myself certain things and it would manifest in a negative way. In a negative way. Um, you know, I remember when I was going through something so terrible and I was just like, oh my gosh, this must be part of the curse. This must be part of the curse. And I always was different, you know. I always loved everyone and I always was very compassionate regardless. Like I always tried to, you know, show love to everybody. And I guess the first time that I heard a spirit or I saw a spirit, I was probably around seven. And when I told my mom about it, she told me again that was part of the curse, right? So I was supposed to be scared of all of this. All, everything that I um, use to empower myself nowadays, I was brought up to believe that it was wrong. It was of the devil. It was because I was cursed that all of these things, that I would see these things and I would hear these things and all of that, right? So, um, your mind is extremely, extremely strong, extremely, extremely powerful. It is so powerful. Um, so now I want to fast forward. So I had all this stuff happen in my life, all right? I attracted certain things, certain people, um, I never really had love and affection and didn't really know how to, um, how it was supposed to be given to me. So I continued to attract partners that were abusive, um, narcissistic, and things like that. Because I didn't know any better. Right? I didn't know any better. And I would... Didn't I didn't know how to speak good to myself. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know how to empower myself. And so I would seek outside validation because I, I never heard, I love you. I never heard, you're good enough. I never heard any of that, right? Um, and the reason I never heard any of that was because I... You know, I came into this life and I chose parents that had a hard time expressing that. Had a hard time being able to give any of that. But I, it was, it was natural to me, you know. It was natural to me when I saw somebody hurt, when I saw somebody that needed help. I always picked these guys that were, you know, really fucked up. Because... I was like, man, they need love too, right? They need love too. Everybody needs love. Doesn't everybody deserve love? Yes. Everybody does deserve love. So, um, for many years, I decided that I was going to talk to myself like I was shit. Because I felt like I was shit. Um, I would say things to myself that were just unimaginable. I would, um, anytime something bad happened, it was my fault. Um, like I said, you know, it, it was a curse. So, um, it didn't matter what it was. I remember, <laughs> I remember, um, my grandma got sick. She got cancer. And I was like, it's because I'm living on the same property as her. I caused this. It's my fault. You know, I'm cursed. I caused this. And, which is ridiculous, right? Completely fucking ridiculous. But I told myself these things. I told myself these things. I told myself I wasn't worthy. I told myself I was unloved. I wasn't worthy of love. I told myself that I, all I did was bring bad into everybody's life. Um, I got so bad that I cut myself off from everybody because I didn't want them to be or affected by my curse, right? And, um, for many years, right before I, um, so 
let's fast forward, right? Let's fast forward. My mom passes away, and um, I don't get closure from that. Like, she passes away. And she was the one that I went to, right? Even though she told me I was cursed, even though she told me all the, all the times when I had beings that would manifest in front of me, when I had things like that, I would go to her. Mom, what does this mean? What does this mean? Because she would always tell me certain things, but she never told me um, anything positive about it, right? So she would feed into my fear of it. Well, my mom passed away. And when my mom passed away, activity got really, really strong. Really strong. Um, beings started manifesting in front of me. People started um, coming to me and telling me things. And I was just like, why do people come to me all through my life and they tell me like, oh my gosh, you you have so much power and you're so powerful and oh, this and that and whatever, you know, and they would, they would tell me that, do you know who you are? Do you know what your purpose is? Because it's really major in this lifetime. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I'm cursed. I, I, I have to get rid of this curse first. And I don't know how to do that because every time I go to somebody to get it removed, they want me to pay thousands of dollars, right? That's what they always tell you. Like, sure, yeah. They validate your shit story. They're like, oh, yeah, you have attachments and you're cursed. You're, you're, you're fucked up. Like, oh, my gosh, girl, we need to, we need to do some, you know, um, we need to do some limpia on you and we need to call in this and that. And right. They always tell you that. And I was like, I'm never going to get rid of it because I can't afford to pay this money. Right. I'm always going to be cursed. So I don't even know what you guys are talking about. So I got with my sister because my sister my sister believes in me and she's always believed in me and she's amazing. She truly is. So my mom passes away and I'm like at my lowest because there's so much activity in my house. Like I'm being held down at night and things are flying across the room and there's so much activity and I'm like, Alexis, I don't know what to do. What are we going to do? I don't know what to do. And I was literally going crazy. And I would wake up every fucking day. And, and anybody who's known me for many years will know. I would wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Hearing noises, hearing whispers, hearing voices, and all that shit. During 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Well, my mom taught me that's the witching hour. And that's bad. Things were trying to attack me, right? And so I was like, man, I really got to get rid of this curse. I don't know what the fuck to do. So me and my sister got together and we got a Ouija board. We just made one. We just made some weird ass um, Ouija board. Oh, and also I want to I wanna stop right there because if you're getting woken up between 3 and 5, it's because it's part of your awakening. You're starting to awaken. You're starting to become sensitive to all of the different energies in the universe. And that is beautiful. That is beautiful because that means you're, you're expanding and you're waking up. Don't be afraid of that. Okay. So me and my sister get together and we get this Ouija board. And I'm like, we're going to contact mom because I don't know what the fuck's going on. And I can't, like, I'm going crazy. I don't understand this guy who manifested in front of me. I don't understand this guy who's telling me this. And I don't, and the, everybody is, you know, telling me all this stuff. And I don't even know these people. And so she was like, she's, she's my, she's my cheerleader. She's my sister. I am so blessed to have my sister because she lets me practice on her. She lets me, um, she is my, I love her so much. I love her so much. And oh, I love you too, Karen. You know, you know how I used to come to you and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm waking up between these hours. How do I, how do, <laughs> what am I, what's going on? So, um. Me and my sister got a Ouija board and we try to contact my mom. Well, my mom is a stubborn bitch, right? <laughs> She's not going to help. She never helped before. Why would she do now? 
So we got this Ouija board. We, we drove out in the middle of the country. Well, I live out in the middle of the country, but we drove out to this dirt road so we could be alone. And we both put our hands on it. And we're trying to figure out, asking the Ouija board, like, what does this mean? What does that mean? And it's just like, no, 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 no. End, end, end. And we're like, what do you mean? Talk to us, right? And I was like, this is stupid. I can't, I can't go on like this, Alexis. I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm going crazy. And she was like, we're going to burn this shit. It doesn't work. I don't care. We're going to figure it out. You know, my sister. And, um, things were really shit for me. Really shit. Like, I couldn't sleep. I got down to like 117 pounds because it wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping. I was being harassed and bullied at work. It was just a really terrible time in my life. I was with somebody who wasn't, who was just like my mom, wasn't able to express any kind of emotion, took everything that I loved, everything that I was into and made me happy and joyful and shit all over it. Everything. Nothing was good enough and I was just at my end. And this is what they call the dark night of the soul, guys. The darkest part comes right before the light. And so I remember I was just so done. Like I was so done. I couldn't do anything right. I was cursed. And I was such a, I felt like such a victim, right? And when that happened, I couldn't take it anymore. And so I remember that I I wanted to make sure my kids were taken care of so I asked my dad to take the kids for the weekend and this was a Friday and I asked him to go and pick up the kids from school you know for the weekend because I wanted to be alone and I made a plan I was gonna come home and I was gonna shoot myself and I was sitting there, I was sitting there on my bed, and I had the gun, and I just pulled it back because I was going to kill myself, and my sister runs through the door, and she goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, what are you doing here? What are you, why are you at my house? Like, nobody knew I left work, nobody knew I had this plan, nobody knew anything. I was going to kill myself that day because I couldn't, I couldn't go on any longer being a victim. I couldn't go on any longer being cursed. And I felt like if I left the earth, my kids would be better because I was cursed and I didn't want it to go to them. And so I had this gun and I was going to kill myself and my sister comes through the door and she says, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, what are you doing here? How did you, what, why are you here? And she goes, I don't know, I just came. And she goes, were you going to kill yourself? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was. Now I can't because you're here and I can't do it in front of you. And she goes, you can't go on like this. You have to quit your job. And you have to get some help. And you have to do something because I can't I can't have you not here you're my sister you're all I have and so I didn't know what to do I was like okay I gotta work on this curse right so I went to go see somebody and everything was falling apart everything was falling apart and they were like oh it's because you're cursed and it's going to cost X amount of dollars to fix it. And I was like, well, I can't afford that. Like, can I do, is there anything that I can do? Oh, no. Only a trained professional can remove attachments. And it looks like you have three of them on you. I was like, three? I thought I only had one. What the fuck? They multiply? Yeah, they multiply. And, you know, take these, can buy these candles and do, 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 right? All this bullshit. Bullshit, guys. It's fucking bullshit. I want you to know right now if somebody tells you that you have to pay them thousands of fucking dollars to remove a curse 
if you still believe that you're cursed or if you still talk shit to yourself and you still don't love yourself, you're still going to attract bullshit in your life. You're still going to attract darkness. You're still going to attract all that because you have to remove the curse. You have to believe and you have to go through that because that's what I had to do. Every negative thought that you tell yourself, every unloving, fucked up, bullshit negative thought that you tell yourself about yourself, that is the curse. That is what's causing all of the shit to happen in your life. So let me tell you the rest of my story. So I, I um, had to go to therapy because I have PTSD and, and I had so many different personalities because I couldn't deal with reality because I refused to let myself think about all of the things that happened to me as a child. So I had to go to therapy and I had to figure it out. So I started going to therapy and I started realizing that I wasn't a piece of shit. I started realizing that all the stuff that happened to me wasn't my fault. That I was a child. Children are made of gold. They come into this world and they're made of gold. And we do shit to them and make them turn to lead. So this, I, I want to make this very clear that this is not about being a victim. Because I'm not a victim. I wasn't a victim. I came into this fucking life and I choose... I chose these lessons and they have made me who I am and I can relate to almost everything that almost everybody has gone through in their life because of the lessons that I chose to come into this lifetime and this incarnation. So I ended up getting my shit together. My, I got away from my ex. He kicked me out. <laughs> He kicked me out, and which was a blessing, because I had to dig deep, and I had to find the strength to be who I needed to be. And I dug deep, and I found where I needed to be. And I started to love myself, slowly. I started to realize that, you know... I wasn't all those things I told myself daily. So, <clears throat> fast forward to me working on myself, right? I'm slowly working on myself, starting to love myself. And so, I'm, I haven't been out, been able to meet with people. I haven't been out of my house. I haven't done anything because I've just kind of been closed up. And I had only a few close friends. And so I decided that I was going to, you know, try to call in a partner. And so I met this beautiful, beautiful person. And the first thing I told him was, hey, I just need to let you know that I'm cursed. I'm fucked up. I have a hard time um, expressing myself and communicating properly. And I told him, like, all these bad things about me. And I was like, but if you want to go out with me, then we can go out. <laughs> and he goes, that's funny. I don't see any of that in you. And I was like, well, just wait. So, <laughs> so we started dating. And any time that I said anything negative about myself, he would correct me. Because I used to say these things out loud to myself. I used to say them out loud to myself. Like, oh my god, you're so fucking stupid, Angela. And I would, I, I told him, I was like, I have PTSD. There's, there's multiple personalities of me. Are you going to be able to deal with this? And he was like, I think you're beautiful. I think you're perfect, just like you are. And I was like, dude, like, you must be more fucked up than I am. And he was like, no, I think you're perfect. And so things were beautiful. 
I stopped telling myself, or I slowly started working on stopping telling myself all of those be- all of those bad things, right? And I started to realize that I was beautiful and that I was magical and it was okay and he supported every fucking thing that I you know I told him I said I'm I'm a fairy I'm I've talked to fairies and um you know I I like crystals and I'm want to get into tarot and I believe I'm a healer and I was like so you know what do you think and he was like I think that's awesome how can I help you what? He goes, you are a fairy. You are magical. You are beautiful. What? Okay. So then <clears throat> I started talking to him about my curse. Like I was like, okay, we've been together long enough. I should probably tell him about my curse, right? And things started happening in the house again. Lots of activity. Like so much activity. You know, light bulbs popping and me waking up in the middle of the night and blah 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 and I had just barely started my spiritual journey like barely started it so I didn't know anything about anything like nothing like didn't know how to ground didn't know how to protect didn't know how to nothing you know and I was still afraid like so afraid of being bad and devil and all that stuff right and so um had a really good I got a job and it was really going great and everything's going good with him and I and then stuff bad stuff started happening and I was like oh my gosh this is a curse this is a curse and I was like Alexis what do I do that's my sister I was like what do I do the curse is coming back and everything is going great and I love this person and I mean I've never been this happy in my life and I don't know what to do and I was starting to go crazy again and then I got a bonus check. And I was like, OMG. OMG. I have enough money to take care of the curse, right? Oh, I'm so happy. Like, I'm so ecstatic. Like, I'm, oh my gosh, everything is going to be wonderful because I'm going to be able to pay the $3,000 to lift the curse and I was like oh everything like it's been so beautiful it's just gonna get so much more beautiful and I'm just oh my gosh so I go back to the person that told me it was gonna be X amount of money to lift the curse right oh my gosh I have the money I have the money I'm ready I'm ready go ahead and lift the curse take the curse away you know and can you make sure it doesn't go to anyone else in my family because I don't want it to leave me because my biggest thing was harming anyone else right So I gave this person money and they told me to do a a bunch of different things and I was like, okay, the curse is going to be lifted, right? It's going to be lifted. So after that, I know guys, I was taken, I was like a fucking sucker. Yeah, I know. I know. It was part of, it was part of a lesson I had to learn though. And so, um... (laughs) I gave this person money and let me tell you something so when you have a curse on you and somebody wants to lift it from you and they tell you I'm gonna lift the curse pay me X amount of dollars and they do whatever they do sure there are people out there that can remove attachments there are people out there that can you know reverse bad karma whatever you want to call it whatever they do okay because I did have attachments And because I stayed so low vibrational, that's why I had attachments. Because of all of the shit that I told myself, I had attachments, okay? So when you go to somebody and they say, I'm going to lift the curse, pay me X amount of dollars, and then you pay it to them, and then they, um, they make you believe, this is where the, this is where the mind over, the mind is such a powerful tool, they make you believe they've removed it. Now... If you don't do the fucking work to remove it and stop talking shit to yourself and stop being so 
um, negative, that's the word I'm looking for, so negative, guess what, that money you paid them, that you're going to have to pay them more money, because you have to do the work, you have to do the work to change your fucking reality, and I learned that the hard way, so, I was really excited, right? I was like, oh my gosh, the curse is lifted, and she's going to remove the curse from me, and oh, I, you know. So, I believed her. The curse, she's like, oh, I was able to remove the attachments, and blah, 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 blah. And then, about two months later, stuff started happening again. Bad stuff. Because I was still talking bad to myself. I was still... Telling myself that, oh, you had a traumatic brain injury, so you can't remember anything. Oh, you um, have PTSD anxiety, so you're going to fail at your job. Oh, you're not good enough to be able to blah, 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 whatever. So I was still talking shit to myself. And I remember I contacted her and I was like, why is bad stuff still happening? You said you removed the curse. And she was like, well, you know, um, I'm still working on it. And I was like, bitch, I paid you a lot of money to remove the curse, and the curse is still here. And so I realized at that moment that, so two things happened to me at that moment. One was I was like, this curse is never, ever going away. Never. And the other one was, I'm afraid, I'm tired. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of being sad. I'm tired of all of this shit. Like, I got mad. Like, woof, Kali, man. I got Kali. Kali was like, no. Feed that bullshit to me. We're done. We're fucking done. Right? And I was like, I'm going to have to figure this out myself. Because obviously I paid this bitch a whole bunch of money. And she didn't do what she needs to do. So I'm going to do the research and I'm going to fucking do it myself. Because I was the only one that could do it. Truthfully, honestly, I was the only one that could do it. So I started doing like a bunch of research. And I started to look into how do you remove, you know, do it yourself. How do you remove your curse and, um, all this other stuff. And after I got mad and I got, you know, I felt like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna let anything happen to my kids. I'm, uh, it stops right fucking here. All the stuff stops right here. I, you know, I protected my kids so that they wouldn't be abused like I was. I protected my sister so she wouldn't be abused like I was. I am not going to let this happen anymore. I'm fucking done. And my partner was like, you can do anything that you put your mind to. I, I support you in any way. And I was like, I got to figure out how to fix this, right? So I was really new in my journey, like really new. And I joined a group and, you know, I, I got in with a, some really nice people that helped me to open up my gifts. Because... As I was trying to learn how to lift my curse, I figured I needed to open up my gifts as well and I needed to let go of that old belief that they were all of the devil. And I was like, I've got to use this shit to fight the shit that I'm going through, so I need to develop this. And I remember a really good friend of mine, he goes, Angela, you need to find people like you. And I was like, people like me? Is there people out like me out there? Is there people that believe in fairies and believe in, you know, all kinds of different things that I believe in? Are there people out there that talk a fucking weird language that they don't know?
like I do? Are there people out there that see black shadows and sometimes see colors around people? Are they, are there, those people really exist? And he was like, yeah, you're not alone. And I was like, wow, okay. So I found people like me and I started to do the work. And I had to realize that I was never cursed, that I attracted all this bad stuff to me. I had to realize that I was trying to control things so much that it was causing things to happen. I had to realize that I was creating that. And so, like I put at the beginning, this is my truth. This is my story. It doesn't make me a victim. But I just wanted you guys to realize that if bad things are happening in your life, bad things happen. It's called the wheel. It's called life. It's called the ebb and flow. When bad things happen, we have to look at that as an opportunity to learn and to grow. Not that I'm cursed, I'm a bad person, I'm fucked up, all those things we tell ourselves. You have to look at it like, this happened to me so that I can help someone else. I choose, or I chose, before I came here, to have these things happen to me. And that's a big pill to swallow. I chose for these things to happen to me. And they've made me who I am today. When things are not going the way that we feel like they should go, we have to reevaluate what's going on. And I always thought that, but I always thought I must be doing something wrong. I'm bad. I need to be punished because I've done something wrong. No. No. I want you to know that you're perfect, just as you are. You're perfect. And when you realize that you're perfect and you're divine, you're beautiful and you're amazing, and you are me and I am you, that's when the magic happens. My cat is scratching on the door. I'll be right back. Mm. Come inside, baby. Oh, Princess Fat Face. No, I'm not going to go pet you while you eat. Not right now. Okay. And so, this is... I, this, this was, you know, this is part of my story. My story is really, really large and big and, um, there are so many different aspects to it, but this is the one that Spirit's been asking me to talk to you guys about. Because I've had people come to me and they say, I'm cursed. These people are drawn to me for some reason. And... Um, they're just drawn to me. <laughs> and I'm like, one, you're not cursed. Well, I have attachments. Okay. You have attachments. So what are you saying to yourself that's letting these attachments be in your space? These people come to me and they're like, I just want you, can I pay you money so you can remove the curse? No. I can't remove the curse. You have to be able to realize, one, that you're, you are divine and amazing and beautiful and things happen because they happen. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming yourself. Stop feeling like you're a victim for fuck's sake 
It doesn't matter what happened to you in your life. You are not a fucking victim. You are empowered because of that. You are strong and you are, you are not a victim. You are amazing and beautiful and when you realize that you choose the lessons that happen to you in your life so that you can grow and become who you need to be for the world. Not just for yourself, but for humanity. Because all of you have a purpose. Every fucking one of us has a purpose. And you have to realize that you're perfect. You're not broken. I used to call myself my screen names. My screen name was Lost and Forgotten. Shattered. The Shattered One. Broken. Wanting to be fixed. I was never broken. I was never shattered. Sure, I had like a whole bunch of different personalities and um, there were so many aspects of me that it was all over the place, but you know what? I wasn't broken. I wasn't cursed. I wasn't shattered. I wasn't lost and forgotten. If you're feeling like that, it's not true. If nobody today tells you that they love you, just know that I do. I love each and every fucking one of you. Every one of you. Even those that I don't get along with and that I don't agree with. I still love you. Because I want the best for everyone and that's how I've always been. You could ask my sister, she's just like, why do you want the best for everybody? People that hurt you, people that do bad things to you, you still want the best for them. What the fuck's wrong with you? It's because I love everyone. Like, I truly fucking love all of you and want you to succeed in everything you do. Just always realize that you're not a victim. That everything, you know, everything that happens to you, you've chosen. And it's to make you who you need to be. And every time that... Every time that we are able to help someone else with our story, with our cards, with our words, with our song, with our fucking voice, we're helping everyone as a collective, as a whole. Yes, collective uprising. Yes, Ray. So my name is Angela Marie. And I'm not a survivor. And I'm not a victim. And I'm not broken or lost or forgotten or unloved or incapable of being loved. I am perfect. I am divine, I am beautiful, and so are you. Spirit has been asking me to share this for about a month now. And I was terrified because I didn't know, I didn't want you guys to see me as a victim or feel sorry for me. And... This isn't about me, like I said. It isn't about me. It's about what I can do for you. And I just love you guys so much. And that's why I created this group. So that we could talk about our stories. And we could share. And we could grow together. And I've come so... <laughs> So, so, so far in my journey. And I have so much more to go. And I just want you guys to know you're not ever alone. 
and your story matters and you matter. I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to share. I love you guys so much. And, you know, the last couple of days have been kind of really rough on me because Spirit's been really asking me to step up and share this. But I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, a lot of changes. And I just want to thank every one of you that have always been there for me and listened to me during my moments. And, you know, I just, I want you guys to know that this is me. I'm real. <laughs> I'm authentic. I speak my truth regardless. It's my fucking truth. Just like you have your truth. This is my truth. This is my story. This is me. Raw and uncut. And... You know... I really hope that this spoke to you guys. I really hope that you realize that you're not fucking cursed. And that you create... You really do create your own reality. You manifest all of that. I manifested things flying across the room, being held down at night, um, whispers of my name, all of that. It fed the fear because I didn't know any better. And I want to tell you, when a spirit whispers your name, they're just trying to warn you or they're just trying to get your attention. Not even warn you, they're just trying to get your attention. They love you. When there are certain things that happen in your life, spirit is just trying to get your attention. That's it. Now, attachments are real. I had several <clears throat> because I allowed them into my life because of all the bullshit I was feeding myself. But... You know, if you have attachments or you feel like you have attachments, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars for them to be removed. All you have to do is raise your vibration so that they fuck off. Tell them to go away. You have more authority than they do. They can't even create anything. All they can do is suck. That's all they do. They just suck, continually suck. They ha they're vampiric because they can't create. They have to feed off of things. Don't let them fucking feed off of you. It's that simple. And this is my truth. Okay? I love you guys so much. So, so much. Those of you that are in Melanie's group, I think I'm going to head over there and I'm going to do some cards here in a little bit. So if you guys want some cards from me. I'm going to think I'm going to head over there in a little bit and do some cards. This has been really um this has been really really good for me to be able to share with you guys. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for say, you know, holding space for me as I share. And I just want to let you know, if you need somebody, I'm always here. Everybody, everybody knows you can message me and I'm always there. And I have a lot of patience for people. But victim mentality, victimhood, really rubs me the wrong way. And I get that a lot. I get people who are in that mentality and you don't have to stay there and i won't let you you won't you won't you won't be uh hearing from me to empower that part of you i i, I automatically i just it it makes me um my cat wants to go out now she's over there whining i'll be right back <laughs> Thank you.
yeah, when people come to me and they're like, I'm cursed and all this bad stuff happens and blah, 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 and they feel sorry for themselves. And look, I have been sick. I have almost died. I think twice. Yeah, almost died twice. Um, I've been abused. I was, I was physically, you know, assaulted by my ex-husband and it caused a brain injury. That's, I mean, I've been through a lot of shit. And so what, anything that you've been through, I may not have been through it, but I can relate in some way or shape or form. And when I'm telling you that it's all a matter of how you see things, I'm being fucking real. And that's what I'll, that's what I'll tell you if you come to me and you say you want to feel sorry, you want somebody to feel sorry for you, I'm, I can't do that. I mean, I can love you and I can hold space for you, but I want to empower you because I've been there. So... Anyway, I love you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Many blessings to all of you.